Hi Pierre Philippe, you are working at the European Space Agency, within the Fire Lab on Earth Observation and Open Innovation. Can you tell us a bit more about your work? My passion is to bring together the power of high tech and people and their ideas to address global environmental challenges that we face on our planet, such as climate change. So I have now the unique opportunity to lead a small team of researchers at ESA to explore how to use new digital technologies such as artificial intelligence to make the most of the big data coming from our satellite. My team is based within the beautiful Fila Bedesren in Italy. This lab was recently set up by our director to embrace the new trends in new space that we call Space 4.0. So in the Fila lab we try to connect new ideas, new technologies with talent, data and capacity in order to address challenging problems and create innovative EO-based solutions. We develop use cases, capacity and open tools and try to put them in the hands of the one making science and decision. We also operate as an open space where we invite students, researchers, makers, innovators to work together with us because we deeply believe that innovation can only be achieved through collaboration. That's why we are building so many partnerships with new players in the digital and computing world, but also organizations such as UNICEF and the World Food Program to help address real world problems such as food security and natural resource management. So if you're interested to join us in this effort, please let me know so that we can together explore how we could collaborate. What is your current research focus? Today my team is focusing on exploring the impact of so-called disruptive or transformative technologies that could change significantly the way we do things in the Earth's observation sectors. Techniques such as AI, blockchain, VR, cloud and quantum computing. But our main focus for the moment is on machine learning. The idea is to develop new AI capabilities and knowledge for Earth observation that we can then mainstream into more traditional practices of the space sector. However, I want to stress that all these technologies are just tools, sometimes very powerful, but still tools in the toolbox to address our real focus, which is and remains our planet. In fact, with these new techniques, we try to better understand how our planet is changing, and in particular our climate, and how it's impacted by human activities. Here the global observation that we take from space on our ocean, atmosphere, land and biosphere are essential to measure this complex Earth system so that we can better quantify what is changing on our planet and better predict its evolution. As such, the Earth's observation data really provides users with the foundation to make informed decisions and guide us hopefully in a more sustainable future by better understanding in which parameter space we can operate safely. So what is happening in Europe, in Earth observation? Over the last decades, Europe has achieved considerable leadership in Earth observation, in particular through the development of the Copernicus Initiative in partnership with the European Commission and Member States. With the help of industry, Europe has developed one of the strongest Earth observation capabilities in the world based on a family of sentinels and related national and third-party mission. Such system provides the backbone for global monitoring of our planet on an operational and sustained basis, meaning that you will get observation of many health parameters of the Earth, a 10-meter resolution type, every week for the next decades, and all this with a free and open data policy. This monitoring system is really unique in the world and is also complemented with other interesting capabilities. For example, meteorological mission developed to improve weather forecast in partnership with UMEDSAT, but also research mission addressing specific scientific questions related to the Earth system, such as the Cryosat mission to measure ice dynamics in the polar regions and the SMOS mission to measure soil moisture and salinity. Also, since a few years, we witnessed the rapid emergence of constellation of small sat driven by the private sectors with companies such as Planet and Spire, which provide daily monitoring at high resolution. 
So all these new missions give us a unique ability to see our planet as we've never seen it before, with high sampling in space and time, and all of that at the global scale. This also leads to new challenges for scientists and data providers to make sense of this enormous amount of data, but also at the same time new opportunities for business to develop the new generation of information services. So which challenge do you see for Earth observation? One of our challenges now is to make sense of these petabytes of data that are routinely delivered by satellites and put them in the context of other data collected on Earth through, for example, ground infrastructure, connected sensors, and also open data on the internet and social media. So the focus here is really moving on extracting the relevant information and intelligence from this big data. Looking by eye is no more an option. There is just too much data of too many different types. Just the Sentinel alone already delivers terabytes of data per day, every day, and it would take several hundred years for human operators to look at what is being done from the satellite. So we need machines to do that job, and that's where AI comes in into the equation. It's really a powerful tool providing a new, automatic and scalable way to do the job. AI and Earth observation are really a match made in heaven. What is artificial intelligence? And why is artificial intelligence so important for Earth observation? AI is in fact not a new technique. It was already around in the 60s. But today it's going to a massive renaissance. This rise of AI has been driven by a convergence of several factors, including faster and specialized hardware and computing, such as GPU, improved machine learning algorithm, bigger investment in the domain, and very importantly, access to more and more data, in particular, annotated data. So today, AI is routinely used in everyday life without us even noticing about it in applications ranging from recommendation engine, translation services, face recognition, digital assistant, and self-driving cars. The power of AI lies in its ability to effectively approximate unknown functions and to find quickly patterns in multivariate data. AI can easily connect the dots in multiple dimensions. In particular, we are interested in a branch of AI called computer vision, which has dramatically progressed over the last decade, following a series of seminal papers. And it turns out that the techniques of computer vision can be applied to Earth observation, but even more powerfully as we have more spectral bands. So we can automatically classify images and find patterns. So we are now becoming good at perceiving data and see what's inside the pixel, and we now need to transform our perception into decision. We also need to be aware of the limits of AI, which often remains a black box. This prevents the big uptake of AI for decision in our business. We therefore work with domain experts to properly interpret the data and also bring physics back into the statistics. What are possible applications for artificial intelligence for Earth observation? In the lab, we are looking at a wide variety of applications. The main application is automatic classification problem of Earth observation images using computer vision. For example, we are working on a food security use case in Malawi with the World Food Program and UNICEF. We use drone data on crop from the field in Africa, train a machine learning on it, and then transfer the learning to Sentinel-2 to scale up. We are also looking at how to use the data from multiple sensors to fuse them together, trying to build a kind of comprehensive picture of the Earth while trying to better understand their interaction in the system. For example, using data cubes to quantify the impact of climate extremes or El Nino on the land, atmosphere, but also the economy. We have also done different AI for EO challenges, uh, for example, with the Frontier Development Lab, demonstrating new capability to quantify the effects of clouds on our climate or to detect floods and manage disasters. Another more recent exciting opportunity is to apply AI at the edge, bringing AI to space. 
a team at ESA is working on a small demonstrator experiment called FISAT-1, which is a small SAT with a dedicated AI chip on board. This is an experiment to assess the value of AI in space. The satellite should be launched within the next few months to demonstrate the ability of doing smart sensors to recognize features like clouds in real time, thereby giving the satellites more autonomy. What advice would you give to students and innovators watching this online course? Today is really an exciting and unique time. We have easy access to huge amount of data, most of it open and free. Access to state-of-the-art techniques such as AI, mainly through open software. This means that there is a unique opportunity for scientists, entrepreneurs and innovators to work on things that matters for our planet and our future. Things that we care about. There is an opportunity to do great science with this data, but also an opportunity to create the next big startups. AI and Earth observation is really a perfect match made in heaven and applying it for good can have a major impact. So this MOOC is very important to raise awareness about these capabilities and opportunities. So after this course, I hope you can step back and take a long-term view, thinking a bit about what you want to do with your time, what you care about. Give yourself ambitious goals to tackle hard questions. Be open with your ideas and simply go for it.